Uh, we're going to Major Anton Uggen. Uh, okay, let's get Major Anton Uggen on um, for our update. Uh, obviously, one of the big things that we want to ask him about, Bree, was there was a sentencing in the federal court, the district court. Um, just the other day, Adriana Cotero did a great story on this. And basically, it uh, detailed um, in this sentencing how an individual who was facing sentencing for uh, his part in um, what's well, basically uh, being an alleged meth dealer. Um, Bree? Yeah, you, you wanted him to come on and, and ask him about it. So, yeah. Uh, Anton? Yeah, Anton. So, anyway, okay, Bree's laptop's broken. She can't call it up. Um, but what had happened was this guy, uh, and I guess was smuggling meth into the prison in DVDs and he was being allegedly assisted by his mom and another individual. Um, and this was pretty recently. I mean, this guy's been in incarcerated there at DOC for the last 17 months. Um, I guess first, qu Major, Major Anton, good morning, by the way. Unmute. Morning. How's it? <coughs> well, where are you at? Are you at Tinian? <laughs> no, no, I'm in my office. Oh, I thought you were in your houseboat. <laughs> no. Okay, let's get into this because the time, the time. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, was a Guerrero, I believe, was the guy's name. Um, is the is the Department of Corrections looking into these allegations that were released in the federal court, Major, relative to the smuggling of crystal methamphetamine into the prison, um, I believe in DVDs? Um, no, we're not. We're not investigating it. He, uh, he's, uh, his information was obtained, I guess, from the federal side, reviewing uh, several of Mr. Guerrero's phone calls to his families. Uh, this is over the course of several months, I guess they were looking into it. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we did stop some contraband from coming in. Maybe it was from him, from this particular activity. We don't know. Uh, you know, DOC, we, the only thing we can do is administratively. I mean, I can't get warrants. I can't talk to family members. I can't do any of those things with any information. We get information like that. The only thing we can do is turn it over to the, uh, to the, the, the criminal authorities, you know, the police or the other agencies. But um, I mean, this is nothing new to us. This is, I mean, this is how most contraband is getting in. Uh, it makes coordinating with their family. In this case, I believe it was the mom that was apparently coordinating contraband. But um, I'm not sure about the DVD part, but some of the uh, the language, uh, Chris, when they're when they're speaking on the phone, they talk in codes. Yeah. They use the codes. So. You know, they could say what to you and I will be a ordinary DVD, but to the family, it means something else. They know what it means. It means a right? DVD. Most times, they're not going to come out and say what they're looking for. They'll, they'll call it. They're, they're all different kinds of names. They change it up of what they would call what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, personally, I don't. I don't think it was the DVDs they were really referring to. Again, I, I don't have all the audio that the, the federals have listening to that. Uh, you know, they're the ones that come to listen to everything. But uh, yeah, I mean, we do have, oftentimes we do hear family members coordinating for picking up drugs, trying to drop it off, throw it over, uh, or just even trying to run their business outside while they're locked up in here, coordinating uh, with their connect their uh, sources outside. So this is nothing new. I mean, this this is not the first time inmates have got caught on their phone coordinating drugs or criminal activity. That's why the, uh, this is why Chris, the phone system is so important because prior to this, they were using the landline. And when you use the government landline, it's not recorded and there's no way of monitoring or tracking any of their phone conversations. Wow. That's why the, the use of the inmate phone system is so important to the security of the facility because it can help us Track certain criminal uh, elements that are taking place within the prison, so or you, even outside. Right. Even outside. So, are you guys able to review these these phone calls that the inmates and detainees make on the Paytel system? Say again, sir. Are you guys able to listen to these phone calls that are recorded with the Paytel system? Yes, yes, we can listen to it. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's over there's over about maybe more than a thousand. 
to 1,500 phone calls going out of our facility a day. I mean, our population is 560. So if every inmate makes two phone calls a day, that's over a thousand phone calls. So we're, you know, we're obviously not able to listen to every single phone call going out of the vicinity. Right. Sometimes it's just random that we're able to monitor or in response to a complaint or some information that we do receive about a certain individual, then we can go back and try to look into it. But uh, we're just not capable of reviewing every single phone call going out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want me to read? Um, yeah, can you? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it was a lengthy hearing for Guerrero. His attorney, Sam Bataro, called a DEA task force officer, Henry James, with Guam Customs to testify on behalf of the defendant's involvement in a scheme to bring in contraband into the Department of Corrections during his 17 months in the Hagatnya detention facility awaiting sentencing. Several pay telephone conversations were brought into evidence and played back of Guerrero speaking with his mom and a man named Ben regarding alleged drug transactions. Despite numerous objections by defense counsel Jay Ariola, the court allowed the government to proceed with questioning Officer James and playing back the phone call recordings. As heard in the playback, Guerrero allegedly set up a transaction directing his mom to call a number to pick up $300 to go toward four DVDs that each cost 150 bucks. Officer James stated that based on his experience and being familiar with coded language, he interprets four DVDs to mean four grams of meth suspected to be brought into the detention facility. During another phone recording, Guerrero was accused of discussing another drug deal involving five grams of meth inside a package for his mom to pick up. James testified that he recognizes Guerrero's voice based on prior interviews with the defendant, listening into many of his phone calls, and that the individuals on the line address him as Daryl. The defense asked for continuation for cross-examination on the witness to further investigate the allegation brought forward today. The court granted the request and scheduled a return for Friday, May 28th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Well, Major, I mean, given this, you know, I know you said there's just no way you can listen to all the phone calls that um, go out at the prison, but, you know, just when you hear something like this, does it maybe you think, hey, we should probably get somebody on that mm -hmm. and just kind of uh -huh. check it out? Uh, but, you know, we were, I thought it was at the Department of Corrections in Mingilao. So this uh, kind of says it's in her gut. Yeah. So right. do you guys have an issue with the drugs being smuggled uh, into the Hagatni detention facility? Because this kind of, yeah. he, this was at a sentencing hearing. So he's saying in the past 17 months. Right. The scheme. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's department-wide. We, I mean, look at the canyon. We're right there in the heart of the, the, the canyon. The, the the road on the side between Pedro's Plaza, the public easement, right? I mean, people drive by all the time. They throw things over. We've had people come from across the street, throw things in, and run up the hill towards the governor's, op, uh, governor's house. I mean, we just can't secure that whole area down there. because it's a. We tried putting up a fence. I remember Brennan put up a, was going to put up a fence back then. And she got criticized for wanting to put up a fence around the old Guam Police Department when we were going to take over because it would be unsightly. But, we, you know, we try our best to increase the security, but, I mean, we're in the middle, we've got no secure perimeter. And then the prison up here in Manila, we're right off the road and we've had a lot of throwovers. Uh, and this is just one of many of the inmates uh, coordinating this. Uh, we catch it several times, we do catch, uh, we're able to stop it. Sometimes we don't. We, we find things on shakedowns and stuff like that. So this is a constant battle every day to yeah. keep this out of our And uh, again, most of these guys, when they come in, you know, they're high, they're on drugs. They've been doing this for years. Right. They come behind bars. They don't just stop their criminal activities because they're locked up. You know, they still try to continue uh, finding ways to circumvent the regulations. And, you know, obviously, uh, they're not afraid of breaking the law, so rules and regulations may not mean much to them either. And so, you know, they, they continue to find ways, and then their wives are helping them, their, their girlfriends are helping them. The their moms. moms. Are helping them. The Uncle moms, Ben, the Uncle Ben is involved. Everybody helping them continue with their, and then they go before the court and, you know, tell the judge they're sorry. Uh, you know, I, I'll be a good person. Uh, please let me out. And then they come back to the prison and try to coordinate 
more stuff to come in. And so this is why, you know, we're constantly, you know, uh, doing what we have to do to try to prevent it. But yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy trying to manage this with the facilities we have too. It's, it's really, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I mean, right. you know, we don't have all the officers that we need. We only have about 182 officers. That's from the warden. We did hire quite a few, uh, at one point 60 officers, we got up to about 230. But over the last uh, year and a half, we've lost uh, maybe more than 30 officers. They've left due to other careers or just, this is just not the job for them. So, you know, it's it's a, it's a challenge, but we're continuing to stay in the fight and, and to press on and, and do what we can. There are some times we do catch these guys doing something and we will take corrective action as soon as we do catch it but you know even in doc side you know a lot of it's just restricting them and and you know banning their visitors and things like that that we do on our side but we do uh, if we do find something more criminal that's on the outside we'll try to turn it over to the proper authorities so they can do their follow through right on uh but major just to clarify uh for those who have relatives or loved ones inside doc or gotten in detention facility you really can drop off DVDs? So, yes, yeah, sir. DVDs are, I mean, we don't have cable TV in the, in the housing unit. They do have a TV and a DVD player. And so uh, as part of their incoming, uh, for example, uh, a block may be authorized to have 15 DVDs together, all together. Mm. So if you have, uh, if you have 40, uh, 40 inmates in a block and you're only, you're allowed to have 15, each, each of them sometimes will bring in two or three DVDs or have it brought in through incoming. Yeah. But at no time are they allowed to have more than 15 in their in that particular block. Is it all like cases. Jesus movies or you'd let them watch whatever? No, I mean, we, we screen uh, what, what movies are coming. We don't allow certain types uh, of movies okay. to come in. Right on. Well, is DOC uh, allowing people to drop off, families to drop off stuff at, at, at the Hagatnia Detention Facility in the past 17 months? During COVID? So again, yeah, there, there was a few uh, there were a few months when nothing was being authorized, but again, like for the past several months, we've authorized uh, uh, personal hygiene and some other other items to come in, including the DVDs and stuff. But uh, again, you know, this this issue about the DVD being uh, you know one hundred fifty dollars, I, I don't think that was the DVD they were referring to. Right, right, right yeah. 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 But yes, they are. We, you know, uh, like I said, several months last year, we had suspended all incoming. Uh, then we restrict, we lifted a little bit to new confinees that just coming off the street for, uh, em, we call it emergency incoming. So that's where they just come off the street and they don't really have any clothes or anything like that. So we'll allow the family members to drop something off, but all items are inspected and, uh, uh, inspected and logged in before it's given to the inmate. And, you know, and so at times we do catch things trying to be smuggled in, in the pants and the clothes, yeah. the deodorant. And I think you've heard previous stories about that, where they're putting it in the underarm the deodorant. And things right. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we do our best to, to inspect all the products coming in. Thank you, Major. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Major. Keep it up. Keep up the fight, the guys. They're hiring a DOC, but not if you're corrupt. I, I want to just say one more thing, Chris. Um, our vaccination. You didn't ask about that. Oh, uh, how about your vaccination, Major? Okay. There you go. So uh, we have about 375 of our prison population has been vaccinated, so about 66%. We're doing another 25 next week. And we're gonna continue to, uh, you know, as we go on, some are changing their mind, asking to be vaccinated. So right now we're at, at 370, about 375 inmates that have been vaccinated. And then, uh, or, or about 66% of our population and then with our staff, we're probably currently at 51% of our staff being vaccinated, and uh, we're working to improve those numbers too. So we're getting there uh, uh, slowly, but surely we're getting there. Right on. I got some old DVDs lying around the house, Major. Maybe we can link up and uh, drop them off for you. Yeah, we can probably create all DVD libraries so we won't have to receive right. anymore from the outside. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like a library, we'll have a library of DVDs that can yeah, sign out for you. It is. No, serious. Mm -hmm. I'm being serious. Yeah. And, and, and just keep it within the facility so it never leaves the facility. Right on, Major. 
Thank you. Maybe you could get some of the ARP funds. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll get some. We just don't know how much right now. We'll get you a Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Blu Blu thank, thank you, Major. I'm going to go because Bree's giving me dirty looks. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, take thank care. Thank you, Major. Okay. Right on.